Hello and welcome to part 2 of backtesting a grid trading system with Python. In this one we are extending the code written in part 1 and run a backtest over the last month. Please watch part 1 to better follow along. Important disclaimer, concept shown in this video are not an investment advice, video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Alright, let's get started. This is the code from the previous video. We saw that we have to make sure that we take care of not only intraday movements, but also take interday movements into account. And the challenge is to only pull new grid levels when you are not in a position. Because if you are in a position, the old levels are the ones valid. To backtest until the beginning of the year, we have to loop over all dates. We already have our dates stored in the opens variable, in specific in the index here. So we are simply extending our existing structure with a loop over all dates. So let's get rid of that and provide a loop for date in opens index to loop over all dates and change the level of indentation for the rest here. Done. Now we are pulling a data frame for each day. So that is an intraday data frame using the slicedf function, which I've explained in the previous video. So this is simple, simply a data frame containing intraday data for a given date. And now, very important, we only want to pull new price levels if we are not in a position at all, meaning we are not in a position on the first level and also not in a position on the second level. Then we want to pull new price levels. Else, we want to keep the old price levels. So we are checking if not any of the position array values are true, then we want to pull, right? But if there is any true value here, we don't want to pull new levels. Then the old ones are still valid. So I'm going to copy paste the level pull here. And of course, get rid of that from the old structure, right? So to summarize, we are looping over all dates, pull an intraday data frame, and we are also checking, are we in a position? And if we are in a position, keep the old levels. If we are not in a position, pull new levels. Okay, now let's move over to the profit calculation, which I'm implementing within this structure here. So I'm going to create a list here, profits, which I populate with the relative profits. Profit calculation, quite straightforward. Uh, sell price minus buy price, right? And if you want to have the relative profit, you set that into relation to the buy price again. So I'm, doing, I'm going to do it like this. When I have a buying condition here, I'm just storing the buy price. So I'm just going to call that buy one because this is the buy on the first level. And then I'm simply pulling my buy price, which is my buy level. So just as a reminder, this was an array containing the buy and sell price for the first level. And the uh, first element was the buy price. So this is simply my buy price for the first level. Same lo logic for the second level. So if I buy a second time, so if the price further drops, I'm going to pull the buy level for uh, the buy price for the second level here. Okay. Now for the selling conditions, we can do the profit calculation. So I'm going to, whenever I have a selling condition here, I'm going to append to my profits list. And what I'm doing is I'm pulling the sell level, subtract the buy price, which I've stored here and here, and set that into relation to my buy price to get the relative profit. So here in this case, this is for the first level. I'm simply pulling the first level sell price, subtract my first level buy price to get my profit, and to get my relative profit, I'm setting that into relation to my buy price. Done. Same logic for the second level, simply appending to my profits list, then pull the second level sell price, subtract the second level buy price, and set that into relation to the second level 
by price. All right. So running this, I have created a, a profits list containing my profits for each trade here. Right. So let's run that. Getting some or a lot of feedback here whenever our uh, buying and selling levels are hit. And let's take a look at that. So these are my profits. And as you see, it makes sense, right? The profits are exactly the distance between selling level and buying level, right? Now let's transform that to a series so we can accumulate the profits more conveniently. So in case you don't understand this step here, so to accumulate profits, I will link a video in the video description uh, where I explained that in detail. So this is simply accumulating the profits in the uh, profit list. So you see this, yeah, quite impressive or insane result of 97%. So nearly doubled the money for that strategy. Now, let me show you what is problematic about this strategy. And you can nicely see it in the end of uh, this loop here. So I'm going to print out the the time I bought and the, the time I sold by simply adding the index here. So for all levels, index, index. And for the last ones, you see it quite nicely. You see, I bought on the first level on the 21st. We have the 26th now. So I'm in this position for five days now. And if you have followed the Bitcoin price, or I, I, I can also show it to you since then. So let's pull the, the timestamp here. Since then, then just plot the close. Since then, the Bitcoin was dropping from that level, right? So we bought a second and, and sold a second one. But you see, we're not closing this position, right? And even on the second level, we are stuck uh, at the 21st. So we are in a position and this position is losing value. It might be that it goes back until the level and then is selling. But this is one of the huge risks of this strategy. To summarize, it might be a good way to capture small profits and accumulate them over time to get actually quite impressive results. The issue are not only tail events, but simply an unlucky timing of entering the position. Imagine you are buying here and then the market constantly drops and doesn't recover. At some point you need to close the position or all gains are wiped out. So in general, definitely an interesting thing to check out, but you need to do some fine tuning here. Regarding trading fees, it is generally right to include them, but you can trade Bitcoin for free at least on Binance. Anyhow, it wouldn't hurt to maybe implement a slight bid ask spread. That said, if you want to even make this more flexible, so more price levels, maybe some optimization to get right price levels, or optimal grid, then hit the like button and let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to see you in the upcoming videos. Bye bye.